On this episode of the Headlight Restoration Pro, I will be showing you how to turn heavily oxidized, damaged headlights like this into perfection like this. Perfect. Flawless victory. Perfect. Flawless. Better than the day it rolled off the lot. You be the judge. Tell me, am I right? Let's get down to business. This is a Acura MDX 2015 with extremely damaged and oxidized headlights. This white spectrum in particular uh, is almost like holding a piece of paper up to your headlight. The white uh, thickness of it uh, actually takes away a lot of headlight. Usually headlights go in two spectrums, either the white heavily oxidized or the yellow. Uh, the yellow still lets out a lot more light than this white. This white uh, absorbs um, this light probably about 85% of the actual light trying to escape. So that's a huge number, which is why she can't see at night. Safety first beyond uh, good looks. Anyway, starting off here with my 3M pad. Uh, don't forget the P is different than a regular pad. The P is a European measurement scale. Uh, regular or American pads, shall we say, we're in America here, um, those do not line up correctly with the European standard. There are scales uh, which will tell you what pad equals what on the European scale, but uh, you can also just buy the pads that say P in front of it, like this pad here. Uh, they tend to be uh, higher quality, in my opinion, the P. Uh, versions of the pads, uh, which is just a European measurement scale. Uh, it stands for a longer acronym, but uh, it just, it's just not going to that right now. But anyways, this is a P500, once again, not a 500 grit. But as you see here, I am hitting this light pretty aggressively on every inch of this light. Um, no favoritism on certain spots because... Pretty much the whole light, 100% of the light, is heavily oxidized, heavily damaged. Uh, that whole top layer needs to be removed, and that's what's going on here with the P500. And what is crazy is, for such an ugly light, this light uh, is actually a very beautiful light. It has what they call a jewel eye. Uh, in the Acura realm, it's called a jewel eye. It has a bunch of little jewels that um, are the lights of the vehicle, which you will see once it clears up and I get all this muck off. Everything is coming off as this is a mid-level softer light. It's not really that hard, so um, all the surface comes off. And this is also the first time this vehicle has ever had a headlight restoration. Here is one of the best tools here, which is an electric duster. Uh, all products, all everything that I use are in the bio. Uh, you just got to click on the link. It takes you right to Amazon, which I purchased it from. And uh, pretty much everything that I use from the pads to my tools to the tape to everything that you see I don't see, I uh, have listed it in the bio. You just hit the link and it goes right to the Amazon now going to be hitting my uh, hard to hit areas here with my three inch interface pad uh, putting uh, the drill pad that I just used now here folding it up right there trying to get these hard to reach areas um, there's a little protruding part right there that you can't really see and then that top area there which the drill doesn't quite fit too good on and some other parts there at the bottom so don't be afraid to use um, the interface pad with a sanding disc by itself to hit those hard areas now moving on to the second stage of this process here with the P800, my white sanding disc. Uh, this is also a 3M sanding disc. Uh, this one, once again, is to pretty much smooth out all those ripples you see there and uh, minor scratches and imperfections left 
behind uh, from the P500, uh, which is uh, the P500 disc is just a removal disc. It's a, a more of a heavy cutting uh, for this uh, particular function, which is headlight restoration. Uh, but this one here uh, is a smoothing and fine scratch removing pad. This one still leaves really microscopic ones behind, but it pretty much cuts the other ones uh, down pretty well. It's all like a chain. Once you remove all of the damage, scratches, and oxidation, and whatever else on the headlight, you pretty much are building it back up to smooth perfection, or as close as you can get it back to smooth perfection. So we are breaking it down, then we're cleaning up all the mess that was left behind from breaking it down, and the same thing with the next step, uh, the Trizac pad, uh, that's even taking it further and breaking down any swirls or any uh, specific uh, scratches or anything left behind still. And this step here is something I came up with uh, after having issues with a little bit of swirling left behind a long time ago that I didn't like. Uh, of course, customers didn't know, but when I would see it up front, I just didn't like it. So I uh, came up with this, and it worked very well. It's pretty much uh, swirl deleting. Uh, these regular flat uh, vertical or horizontal lines uh, fill in very well and they are not visible by the human eye uh, that well as curves and swirls are uh, they look like contour or um, you know they're pretty much visible you know even if they are left behind uh, which this um, pretty much doesn't leave as many swirls behind uh, don't really know the scientific term why uh, but this step is a awesome step to include in your arsenal, whether you do it my way, which is, you know, quite frankly, the best I've seen, <laughs> or you do it another way. This is an awesome, must-needed step. Tremendously boosts your clarity and visibility of the light. It just looks amazing. It does a lot. You must have the gimbal the yellow gimbal that i have uh it could be either way to do it because you can't really hold it by itself but most importantly on that step you need the buffering pad which is the sponge which uh hugs it uh, it's pillowy it hugs it to the surface of the light which uh allows you to get that smooth suction to the light which uh, makes really a smooth process anyways right now using uh water as you saw there in my uh, 3M Trizac P3000 pad. Uh, this pad is a special pad. It's actually one that's like a pad. Sometimes I call the uh, discs pads, but this one is, you know, an actual pad. It's like a sponge, uh, and the uh, the surface on top of the sponge is the Trizac material, which is a, a certain. Uh, design of uh, sandpaper grit that is designed to uh, diminish swirling or diminish scratches or whatnot. It's uh, ultra fine uh, buffing and whatnot and sanding, kind of a buffing meat sanding. It has some kind of special cut to the granulates that are inside of the pad or on the surface of the pad. Now this step here, when it's wet with water, you should be able to see if there's any kind of scratches or anything like that that will uh, protrude. Also with this step here, the Windex, uh, when you're wiping it off, you should be able to see if there's any kind of scratches or blemishes or anything that will protrude uh, or be visible when you apply your final step. Always clean microfiber on this step, always clean, you see that? See how you can't see any kind of scratches or blemishes while it's wet? It's uh, very apparent if you do have any, uh, you can take care of it at this moment before you reach the final step. If need to repeat any steps, it's best that you do it now. Light is now very nice and dehydrated, very dry, very clean, very sterile. Getting ready to start the second to final step here. Now get ready for some magic. Uh, these lights are really beautiful lights. Um, you see how foggy and nice it is? All foggy and gray, hazy. Now watch what this dab method does here. 
you just dab it and dab it and dab it. And part of the dab method is allowing time for it to soak in, this oil base to soak in. Um, and, you know, to spread it evenly so when you're using this high power, it's not flinging all over the place or, you know, doing anything like that. And just to spread it evenly. See how clear that is already? That's uh, the porousness of the headlight soaking up the oil base headlight polish soaking into the headlight, the porousness of the headlight. Uh, this right here is pretty much uh, buffing it and smoothing it all out all the way around there, uh, diminishing uh, that porousness, uh, making it more smooth and glass-like. That porousness is the same reason why people come up with these special gimmicks, let's just call them, where they're rubbing orange juice and vodka on the headlight or they're, you know, farting on it or doing whatever else they're doing. They're putting WD-40 on it. It looks so great, yeah, for like three hours, for like two hours. If you want to do that, you know, every day before it gets dark, that's fine. If not, you know, watch these videos, learn how to do it for real or, you know, get a professional. But uh, there's so many gimmicks out there and they all uh, prey on this aspect here. Uh, the headlight surface is porous when it's all beat up and ran down like that. Uh, it kind of mimics it at this stage here. But uh, this right here would be more permanent than that because this is actual buffing out and closing the gaps of those pores and also filling them in and hydrating the headlight permanently. So uh, this is, um, or more permanently, shall I say, nothing is permanent. But look how beautiful this headlight is already and there's still another step. There's no coating on this yet. At this point, they look about as good as they did when they rolled off the lot. But they're going to look better. Uh, that's how I do it. Uh, nine times out of ten, my headlight restorations come out better than the uh, vehicle has ever had. Whether it's been restored or the day they rolled off the lot, uh, my headlight restorations uh, come out way better. Very important on this step to have a clean microfiber towel. You don't want to be rubbing oil or old deposits on the surface of that. Uh, this is partially why I blow around the area to make sure there's no dust. And I, uh, you know, use a clean microfiber towel on this part. I have uh, hundreds of them. But anyways, this is Meguiar's headlight coating. I like to use this one. It's a very good coating. I use others at times. I'll get into that later in a couple of these. But you always want to start on the outside rim, kind of shooting it in between the cracks. You want this coating to wrap it like a blanket. You want it to hit all the areas. If you don't hit these areas correctly, the um, in between the lights, you have a peeling hazard. I always start with there, and then I fill it in, and this helps it form a uh, pretty much a shell around the whole headlight once it starts drying, and this stuff dries fast. I uh, see how I do this. Um, I apply one large heavy coat. Uh, okay, you have to kind of um, not hit one area too much you have to you know kind of spread it throughout the whole light and double back and triple back and to allow it to dry this stuff will dry in the summer about a minute and a half okay about 90 seconds so you want to get it on as quick as possible especially if you're in direct light right so you want to you know you want to just you know overlap you want to uh, get it all on there. I only use one. The instructions say use two. Now, I do not use two, and this is from my past experience. Two is irrelevant, and two makes your clarity worse, ladies and gentlemen. Makers and factories and scientists don't always have all the data. Um, if you could tell me they've done more headlights than me, I would say you're lying. In my experience, uh, two is not the way to go. Let me show you why. Why not to double coat? Now when spraying the coating, you're creating a shell. Uh, spraying the coating or even wiping the coating or doing whatever other sealant that you're using, uh, clear coat is a shell around the headlight. It's clear and it bonds to the headlight and it hardens much like glass. Within the first couple seconds, it forms a crust around the outer layer well before the other depths of clear coat dry. This crust is on a level much more clear than the rest of the clear coat. Kind of like when you look through a piece of glass and it's super clear, but if you break it and look through the side, it is foggy. 
In this diagram here, this represents the headlight surface and the headlight crest. This headlight represents light escaping. Nice, big, full. This column here represents one layer of clear coat, which forms a crust, the second crust. Now the second crust is a true crust. The first crust here is not a true crust. It is bleaching into or pretty much soaking into the porousness of the headlight surface in terms of headlight restoration. So it has become part of the headlight. So light can escape just the same, if not better in some cases. This brings us to coat number two of clear coat, which brings about the formation of crust number three. Coating number two merely adheres to crust number two. It does not soak into the headlight or the other coating. It merely becomes another layer of coating, which distorts clarity and distorts the escaping of light. Now you're wondering, the main culprit of distortion in this diagram is what? The formation of these crusts. Crust number two and crust number three. Primarily crust number three is the one which can only arrive from the application of coat number two of clear coat. Crust number two by itself is an enhancer in what it should be. To even further touch bases, let's go over these metaphoric examples. Let's take a look at these glasses here. If you pay close attention, notice how this area here is clear, or shall I say more clear than this area here. Why? Because there's more layers, more crusts involved blocking the visual clarity and the passage of light. Pay close attention to this other metaphorical example. See how the different levels here entail different levels of clarity. This being the clearest and every layer getting less and less clear. This is because those crusts, different separated layers, overlapping one another. To obtain the utmost highest level, highest quality of clearness, you must not double coat or more. Let's view that one more time here. Using a heavy coat, but just one. This particular product dries in uh, about 80 degree heat in about 120 seconds. If your coating takes longer, you should not be using it. Like, subscribe, ask questions. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more content.